awake in the light, I awake in the light, I am joyful, I am free, I awake in thy light. I awake in thy light, I awake in thy light, I am joyful, I am free, I awake in thy light. Right, I'm now writing this uh, in response to having written the next um, uh, recording, uh, written, it's not right, is it, recorded, the next recording. And I'm writing this, I'm re recording this now accordingly. For it occurs to me that singing this um, lifted my uh, consciousness and um, psychological state tuned me in to um, recording uh, the recording that follows this. And this is uh, consistent with what um, Kavita was um, talking about last night. Today is Thursday, yesterday was Wednesday. Uh, that follows, doesn't it? <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> she was talking yesterday and um, about how music lifts us. And that's the bit I tuned into, of course, because I really love singing and worship. And I love it because um, uh, it helps me transcend into um, a worshipful state. Um, devotion to God and awareness of God, His presence. Sometimes I feel it in the body, sometimes I don't, I'm just lifted and... Hmm. Thank you, Heavenly Father. So I'm interested to see that my next recording followed after I'd done this very brief song that um, we have at the start of this recording. One thing is clear is that in some sense one thing follows another. And therefore we can constantly re-embark upon devotion to God and all the goodness that we understand to be associated with such. We can constantly re-embark, re-tune in. And one of those ways, well the one I'm obsessed with is um, thanking God, but another way is to sing, isn't it? And uh, of course I mean something fairly reliably godly that's going to lift us. Uh, Kavita would um, probably only sing uh, Paramansa chants and um, songs and um, and ones of um, Kriyananda as well. Um, well, at least that's probably so in large measure. And me too, I uh, really only sing Christian songs and um, such uh, Ananda songs and, that I know but the important thing is music, song, singing, repetition, chant lifts us and perhaps it doesn't lift everybody but if it lifts you well goodness make great use of it you know I mean Walk into it deliberately. Because it's going to lead you through into the garden, isn't it? Back into paradise, if you like. Back into Eden. If we want to think of it in uh, um, Hebrew terms. And we might, depends on our culture. 
perhaps. And I suppose I don't need to say, but I, I, just as a reminder, when you sing, when you read a scripture, read it with your whole heart. Pretend that you're in full worship when you start to sing. God will soon make it a reality, almost instantly. Throw yourself into it. When I say the words, I'm somehow meaning them with great gravity. That's far more important than the song, than the tune, than the sound. This is not a performance. This is worship. We're loving on God. We're saying, hey, I need a cuddle. <laughs> I need your embrace. I need the awareness of your loving goodness, Lord. And we're crying out to God. Or at least you can do. And if you don't feel so moved to begin with, and typically we don't, sometimes we do. But don't wait for the Spirit to move before you ask. We ask and we're allowed to ask because we're feeling a lack. God wants our petition wants us to talk. I want my little girl to ask me when she has a need or a want or a desire because I delight in meeting her needs. In fact, I find this with anyone. I delight in meeting their needs, their wants. I possibly can. There are other things I've got to take into account because I live in a complex situation and uncertainties and so on. Um, I don't come to everything with the mind of God, at least the understanding of God. But I do come, I think. We all think. We come with the values of God, or we'd have changed them. We'd have changed our values. Our values are what they are. They're what we value. So, make worship a regular practice. Keeps you on track, doesn't it? And song, wow, seems to be the epitome of worship to me. You know, when someone falls in love, they want to sing to their beloved. <laughs> I don't know, perhaps not everybody wants to sing to their beloved when they're in love, but I found I was writing poetry and... Mm, thank you, Heavenly Father. Well, I'm adding this a few years later. It's... Um, April 15th, I think, um, 2024. Um, I should say, perhaps the obvious, that not all Christian songs are terribly good or terribly appropriate or, or terribly Christian, really. And similarly, I wouldn't... Um, sing some uh, Paramahansa chants or songs and the same definitely goes for um, Kriyananda. I avoid the melancholic um, and, and many hymns and, and spiritual songs are uh, melancholic, tragic, 
not actually focusing on the good, not actually devotional. In fact, I mean, devotional, joyful, um, is a necessity, I think, in my choice of song. Um, and it doesn't help if the song has beliefs that you don't have, values that you do not have, or do not want to have, which I suppose is the same thing, really, once one realizes it. So, do be selective, that's, well, I think I can say of paramount importance. So many Easter hymns would, uh, and songs would not be appropriate for me to sing. Because I don't have the same theology, if you like, the same beliefs, the same values. And uh, I certainly don't want a song that's trivial or a song about nothing. When it comes to worship, we're in absolute devotional earnest. Because that's what we value. Love you, Dad. Thank you, Dad. And sometimes the songs I choose are quite light. I mean, we have a king that rides a donkey. We have a king that rides a donkey. We have a king that rides a donkey. We have a king rides a donkey, and his name is Jesus. Well, I mean, that's super children's one, isn't it? And it's light and it's joyful. But it is devotional. And it can be just right with some age of children. Yeah, lovely. <laughs>